What is up, guys? Code for 29 is back with a brand new video. Sorry about the background noise once again. Uh, younger siblings are watching the show. Um, but today I'm going to be showing you how to make a hold E to interact. And I like this because so many of the other tutorials I found are just press E to interact. I've made it so you can uh, hold E. Watch, I'll even play it for you so you can see. You have to hold E to open the door for three seconds. Um, you can't just stay there. So watch, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hold E. Three, two, one, boom. And then you can walk through. Look, and then it goes back to three, and you can't go through. You have to hold it again, right? So, yeah, let's uh, let's get right into this video. But first, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, thank you again for over 800 subscribers. It was That's awesome. Thank you guys so much. And, uh, yeah, just keep on <laughs> bringing in those subscribers. Um so what we're gonna do is first thing we're going to insert a part and it's gonna be our door okay so go ahead and uh, make a part right here you can go ahead and anchor it you can call it door right here okay i'm gonna go ahead and delete the other things that i had previously okay and then what we're gonna do um let's move this a little bit like that okay now we're gonna make what we're gonna call an e part so basically it's what's gonna show you that you have to press e um, so make sure it's coming out on both sides of the door. Perfect. And now, uh, I'm gonna move it up a little bit so it's kind of in the center of the door. Anchor it and make it transparent and can collide is false, okay? So make it transparent like that, can collide is false. Perfect. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna enter a surface GUI. And we're gonna call this GUI. Next, what we're gonna do, where is distance? We have to find uh, distance. Um, let's see, it's in here. Let me <laughs> let me look at the uh, max distance right here. Um, so actually, I'm gonna just, uh, by the time you are watching this, I'm going to uh, already have this as a kit for you guys. They will just ungroup. Uh, There'll be instructions like that. But yeah, uh, thanks for to Alan Bill06 for making this whole video possible by uh, helping me with the scripting. Okay, so I'll have a kit for you guys. It's like this. All right, and what you're going to do is you're going to ungroup it and just leave them like that. It'll have this little uh, surface GUI that'll say hold E for three. And then next we're going to get into the scripting. First, though, uh, insert a remote event into replicated storage and call this event open door. Okay, next what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert a local script into starter GUI. And now we, you can name it, um, let's name it hold uh, e script. And this can really be whatever um, key you want it to be, but I'm doing e. So you can say local event equals game dot replicated storage dot open door. Um, actually, this is for the, sorry, that's for a different script. Uh, here is for the real uh, for the script. Uh, local humanoid root part equals game dot players dot local player dot character colon wait for child humanoid root part. So we're looking for the local player's humanoid root part to check because uh, later we're gonna check and make sure that they're in range of the door. So we can say local UIS equals game colon get service uh, user input service. Uh, so this will this is the service that will um, uh, get the keys that when they press them. We can also say uh, local part equals game dot workspace dot e part. That is what I have named my part right here. E part. Um, you can change it to whatever name you want, but just make sure that you have that name right here. Then um, next, what you're gonna say is local holding e equal e equals false. So this is if they are holding e currently. They they are not when they first spawn and they're not right. So local count equals three. That's how long it's gonna take them to. Um, to be able to open the door, I have chosen three seconds. You can choose however long you want. But you can say UIS dot input began colon connect um, function. Let's see, uh, input uh, or key code. Let's say that. So this is um, when they press a key. We're gonna say if the key code. Uh, then you have to say if key code dot key 
code with a capital C equals equals enum dot key code dot e then so if they pressed the key, uh, key e then if and then this is where we're going to check to see if the player is in range of the door we can say if part whoops if part dot position uh minus humanoid root part dot position um and then outside of the parentheses dot magnitude this is a lot of math here that honestly this is where that um this is where I had to have help, right? Because um, I I am not as strong in the math and the magnitude stuff. But anyway, uh, then, so if they are in range of the door, if this doesn't make sense, that's fine, honestly. To be 100% honest with you guys, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, okay? So you can say, um, holding E equals true, because now they are in range of the door and they've pressed E. Now we can say, while holding E equals equals true do. So while they are holding... E, while they're continuing to hold E, we're going to say count equals count minus, whoops, minus one, okay? And we can say print count just so that we um, can see what the count is. And we can say uh, wait one game dot workspace dot E part uh, dot GUI dot text label um, dot text equals hold e for and then we're going to concatenate so say dot dot outside of the parentheses count so this is going to say this is going to make the um it's going to make this uh right here the sign that says hold e it's going to show them how long they need to hold it for right so this is only going to show up for the local player but it's going to open the door for everybody okay um and then we can say if count equals equals zero, then so if they've held it for three seconds, we can say game dot replicated storage dot open door colon fire server, and after that we want to make it so they're no longer holding E, right? So we can say holding E uh, equals false, and then count sorry count equals three. Okay, now outside of uh, all of this, actually, we're gonna say uis dot input ended. Uh, colon connect function key code so this is when they lift off of the key that they were just pressing we can say if uh key code uh dot key code again uh equals equals enum dot key code this is just the same line as up top dot e then we're going to um make the count three so they have to start start all the way over um holding it because they have let go of e right uh equals false game dot workspace dot e whoa workspace dot e part dot gui dot text label dot dot text equals hold e four and then concatenate count again you're really just copying exactly what's up here so at this point we actually have our hold e script if you actually play it it should show um a countdown when you hold e and start all the way over when you let go of e which is brilliant i think two one zero perfect so and then it goes back to three when i let go so the next thing to do is to open the door what we're going to do is we're going to insert a script into server script service and we're going to call this door handling and you can make this, if you're looking for like a jailbreak sort of thing, you can make a little, um, what's it called? Like sewer uh, lid or whatever as your door, but I'm just doing a regular door to open. And then we're going to change this and we're going to say local event equals game dot replicated storage dot open door. Event dot on serve event colon connect function. Uh, player, we don't really need this player, but if you are wanting to um, have it like a... Uh, what, when they hold it, it gives them more money. That's when you're going to want the player because then you can say their player.cash.value. Um, if that makes no sense, sorry, you can just ignore that and keep going with what I'm doing. Say game.workspace.door.cancollide equals false. Whoa, not child added. Child added equals false. And then we can say game.workspace.door.transparency equals 0.5 because we want to make it a little bit transparent, a little bit invisible. We can say wait three because we want it to be open for a few seconds. Game dot workspace dot door. Um, sorry, where am I? Dot can collide equals 
uh, true, because we're going to make it no longer walk throughable. <laughs> and we can say game.workspace.door. Dot, uh, transparency equals zero, so it's no longer a little, um, little bit, uh, what, what should I call it? <laughs> a little bit, um, see-through. That's what I'm trying to say. What should I call it? <laughs> All right. So if we hold E for three seconds, boom, it becomes a little transparent and walk through, and then it goes back. So that is pretty much it. You can change the script and server script service to whatever you want um, to happen when this happens, uh, when they hold E. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And also something with the math that I didn't understand, <laughs> what that's doing is it's not letting them open the door from way over here, right? Because they're too far from the door. They can't, they are just too far from it. So I think this is a really nice feature. I really enjoy it. And I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, make sure to subscribe. I'll be back with more story game videos soon. Um, more how to make a story game tutorials. And yeah, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of those or any of my new videos. Thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it.